Hi again, guys. So today I want to be trying to have some direct communication with you all and basically just improve our speaking technique for the exam because if you know how to answer the questions properly, you're gonna do better and achieve a higher band answer. So the first part of the speaking exam is essentially just an introductory topic on yourself. And so you're typically gonna be asked to talk about your hometown, your social life, your work life, um, and just general questions about yourself. So it could be your studies, where you want to go for university, and it's typically just a general introductory chat with your examiner. So you're not gonna, going to want to go too in detail. Instead, you're going to want to just respond normally as you would if you were actually introducing yourself. So for instance, if you're at a party, you're not gonna go up to someone and tell them everything about your life. You're instead going to keep it fairly short and concise and answer the questions in a quite clear, short way. So for instance, if I was to talk about myself um, and I had to talk about my hometown, so if the examiner asked me the question, where, where do you come from? I would keep it quite short and I would say, I'm originally from Liverpool and I have studied here for the past few years and I'm probably going to be staying here most of my life because I like the city so much. And then he would go on to your next question and you want to keep, yeah, keep it fairly concise and short in that way. So I'd love it if you guys could potentially join the call with me and I can ask you some questions myself and give you some feedback on what you could improve and what you need to maybe work on for next time. Um, I'll also correct any mispronunciations or any kind of errors in you answering the rubric of the exam. And before, after this, I will go on to the part two of the exam and the part three, which are typically more in depth and require longer answers. And part three of the speaking exam then talks about kind of social issues and your opinion about different things. And in the later sections, you can show your grasp of vocabulary, of grammar, and really show off all you know. But in the first section, you're going to want to keep it quite short and concise. So to begin, I'm going to talk about my experiences at school, because this is quite a common question you're going to be asked. You're going to be asked, you know, did you enjoy school? What did you like about it? And it's going to flow like quite a normal conversation. So if I was to answer the question, what were some of my favorite subjects at school? I would say I particularly enjoyed English, uh, which you might have guessed, given my position at MPOB, as well as history and general art subjects. And I could say, if the examiner then replied to me, he might say, why did you enjoy them? I would say, I've always preferred more creative subjects, like the art subjects. I was never very good at maths and science, and I instead always did better at English and history, and that's why I enjoy them more. And so we've got a few people coming in now, and I just want you guys, basically, you can comment it if you want, or you can ask to be invited into the chat. I know it might take some confidence to be invited in, but if you feel like you want me to assess your English ability, give you some feedback, I'd love it if you could join the chat with me and have a kind of one-to-one -one discussion. And I can ask you some questions and tell you what you need to improve on, et cetera. So the examiner might go on from my previous answer and he might say, are you continuing to do these subjects at university? You know, you don't like maths and science, so are you exploring English and history at university? And again, I would keep my answer fairly short. I would say, yes, I love English and I want to continue my studies at university and just keep exploring the subject and seeing if I can excel further in it. And then hopefully I won't have to do much maths or science anymore. And then that would probably be the end of the introductory questions. 
So you can see how I'm not trying to really show everything I know about speaking. It's very introductory, very basic. And then I can go into the kind of more detailed descriptions later on. So another topic I was interested in covering as more people are joining is family life because family life is typically um, one of the topics that's always gonna come up in speaking, not necessarily all the time, but it's one of the standard ones they tend to use regularly. So one of the questions I've got here is how big is your family? So if the examiner asked me this, I might say my family is very close knit. I have two brothers and my mum and dad but I'm not overly close with my extended family. So I've kept it quite short, but I've also shown that I have quite a good grasp of English because I've used, used the phrase close knit, which is quite metaphoric. And I think it's about knitting and you know materials being woven close together. So if you asked about your family life, close knit is a very good expression you can use to basically indicate that your family's close together. It's a bit more metaphoric and a bit of a higher level skill than just saying it literally. And the examiner might then ask me, can you tell me something about your family? And I would say, one of my brothers is a cardiologist and he specializes in fitting pacemakers. So he has a very demanding job, very sciencey, not like what I'm interested in but we all have our different interests and that keeps family life very interesting. And yeah, so if any of you guys who are watching right now would want to maybe comment something about your family life and I can kind of interpret it and tell you what you could improve your answer on, how, how you could achieve higher bands. Um, and also if anyone is brave enough to come on call with me, I would love that and we can have more of a conversation because when you're learning speaking, obviously just writing it is not the same, which is definitely a valid point to mention because wh whereas I've covered writing previously this week, speaking is such a different skill because the spoken mode of language and the written mode of language are very different. And if you're doing a speaking exam as if you're doing a writing exam, it's gonna sound very pre-rehearsed and unnatural so when you're speaking to someone you're not going to be using all these complex grammatical constructions really overly long words formal language you're instead going to want to make it seem as though you haven't re-rehearsed it and you may have rehearsed some stuff in your head beforehand but as long as you can kind of give the impression that it's naturalized and not overly you know worked on before the exam then i think you will do very well because it's it's really meant to be a conversation it's meant to flow it's meant to be like you're actually talking to somebody and so that's definitely something you need to consider because just about the worst thing for an examiner is listening to someone kind of speaking very robotically and slowly as if they've memorized paragraphs and paragraphs of words because really that's quite unnatural. So in terms of family life, if anyone can maybe tell me something about their family, so how big their family is, do you have a large family? Do you have brothers? Do you have sisters? Um, how are your mom and dad? You know, how are they doing? Um, just general questions about your family that you can write forward because your examiner, he's gonna ask you about your family, your work life, your social life, all kinds of things that should be very familiar to you. You should, you know, be able to talk about your social life, your work life. There's no real trick questions here. It's just asking you about yourself. So Lucy here says, I have one brother, brother and a dog. Both of my parents are retired. So that's a particularly good answer there, Lucy, because you have kept it short, kept it concise, it's introductory. Now the examiner knows a little bit about you and he might go on to ask, okay, so what kind of dog do you have? Or he could say, when did both your parents retire? What professions did they do? So it's a good answer because it sets your examiner up for asking you a little bit more about yourself. 
and finding out a little bit more about you. And really, I think the main point of the first part of the speaking exam is really just to introduce yourself, is to get you used to the examiner so that then you can go on to talking about more, um, more social issues and more complex topics. So Lucy says, a small Springer Spaniel, mum was a potter, dad was a consultant. So again, kept it short, kept it sweet. You know, you can talk in more detail in the later sections. And yeah, that gives your examiner some stuff to go off. He could ask, you know, how old is your dog? Um, when did you get him? Did you get him when he was a puppy? Uh, so Kandika says, can I join with you? Of course you can. Um, I'll just need to share the link in the chat and you should be able to join. So copy to clipboard and we'll post this here. And if you click on this, you should be able to join me. I can add you to the stream and then we can have a chat together and I'll give you some criticism, some feedback, tell you what we've done well, what you've done badly, uh, and show you how you can improve for next time, you know, if you have anything to improve on. So I'll put the link in there, and if anyone wants to join, you can simply just click that link, and I can add you to the stream straight away. We can have maybe a group discussion, one-on-one -on -one discussions, and really, I feel like having that experience of talking with a native speaker is very useful because, you know, you'll be able to see how my pronunciation is as a native speaker. You know, I might have a bit of an accent, whereas your friends might be learning maybe American pronunciations, etc. So if you're studying in the UK, you're probably going to meet someone a bit like me, someone who speaks with a kind of accent. And it's something you're definitely going to have to get used to. So, yeah, if you can just click the link, you should be able to join right in. And then I can add you to the stream and we can begin a discussion. So anyone feel free to join. Obviously, it takes some confidence to have everyone assessing your English. But, you know, in the exam, that's what you're going to have to be doing. It might, it's a bit nerve wracking, I guess, you know, you're speaking to examiner, he's kind of, it's like an informal chat, but it's not really because he's assessing your work, but that's just part of IELTS, that's part of the exam technique that you need to learn. Um, and, you know, eventually you'll be able to improve your speaking and increase your level of fluency. So some other questions about your family that I've got here. Um, I have put the link just in the chat here, um, so you should be able to join just off that. Um, but I have some more questions about family that I'll talk about in the meantime. And so another question I have is, how often do you see your family? So I try to return home regularly myself, obviously with coronavirus that has made it more difficult. But given that I have a close-knit family, I try to see them as often as I can. Uh, they all live quite far away from each other. So one of my brothers lives in Glasgow. One of them lives in London. I live in Liverpool. However, we try to see each other as much as we can and keep a kind of close family dynamic. Are you a teacher? So I'm recently, I've recently just become a online tutor for MPUB. And basically, I'm going to be specializing in doing live videos with you guys. I'm going to be doing some recorded videos as well. And basically, my focus is on helping you guys to pass your IELTS exam. So helping you guys to learn exam technique, to understand how to answer these questions, because there's a definite technique to it. I mean, for a lot of native English people, even if they sat the test right away, they might not score a band nine or a band eight because you need to be familiar with the structure and the rubric of the questions. So before, like I said, you want to keep your introductory statements quite short and concise. And, you know, you need to learn these kind of techniques because if you go into the exam and start telling your examiner your entire life story on the introduction section, 
you're not really going to be following the exact rubric of the exam. And, you know, if you, as long as you know, as long as you do your practice questions, you'll be able to achieve a high band. So my major, basically what I did at university, for my undergraduate degree, I did English language. Uh, I did English language and English literature at first, but I decided I liked English language better. So I basically dropped English literature and just focus on English language. And so I really enjoyed my degree. I enjoyed my time at university. And what about you, Kandakud? Did you, have you been to university already or are you wanting to go? Is that why you're sitting the IELTS exam? You know, or are you doing a master's maybe? Because I'm really interested to find out what kind of different degrees we have. Obviously, I do English language, but I know there's a lot of people for example, doing medicine, doing, um, you know, more technical degrees, maybe biomedical science. I know there's a lot of one people do data analytics. So, you know, I can help you with your English. Uh, I can't probably help with your data analytics, but I can definitely help you with your English. Uh, badly needs speaking partner for every single day. Yeah, I mean, that is really just the best way to improve your English because when you go to university, it's natural, it's normal to, to not be as fluent as the people around you who have been speaking English since they were, you know, fresh out of the womb, as we say. So it's, it's, it is difficult, but it's something that improves. I mean, I had a lot of foreign friends at university and I feel like just from being around my group of friends, my group of English friends, they've really just started to improve their spoken language. And I feel like that's, pretty much the best way of improving it is to listen to native speakers, to listen to how they speak, and to just keep putting yourself in situations where you have to use your language. So of course it'd be good if we could, you know, have these back and forth communications and, you know, be able to communicate with each other in a kind of normal, informal kind of way as you might in real life because this test really is supposed to be informal and it's supposed to be kind of reflective of a real life conversation. So I want to ask you guys some more questions basically. Um, and what are some fun family activities you might do? So we have some people joining in the call, which I will add shortly. Uh, what are some fun family activities you guys might do? This is something you are going to get asked on a lot. So if I was asked this question, I might say, my brothers and I are very competitive with each other. We love playing FIFA on the Xbox. We love playing mini golf, uh, kind of family friendly um, activities, but it can start fights, it can start arguments as probably most families are like. So we love being competitive with each other. We love pushing each other, challenging each other, having fun. And I say that's kind of, you know, I have two brothers. So that's kind of our dynamic really. Uh, why'd you choose this side? Oh yeah, you get a lot of opportunities. So really I just, I've always loved English. I've always loved the language and learning more about language. I think language is so interesting. And that's really why I've wanted to just pursue it further. And, you know, I'm doing a master's in social research as well. However, I, I'm just always interested in language and interested in just opening up more opportunities, more job prospects, which is what you should be focused on when you're considering which degree to go. So we've got Osai here and I'm going to add him to the call and ask him some questions and get him to kind of introduce himself to me, ask him some of the basic kind of speaking exam questions that you might be asked in your actual exam. And so obviously we've all got different standards and I'm gonna give you some feedback and hopefully improve your technique for the exam. So I'm just gonna add Osai to the stream right now, if that's okay. And here he is. So, uh, hello, Osai. Can you hear me okay? I hear you. 
Perfect, perfect. So I would like to just kind of ask you to introduce yourself. So obviously let's pretend that your name isn't on screen. And first of all, what's your name and where do you come from? What's your hometown? Okay, so as you can see, my name is Osai Samuel, and I come from Ghana, which is in West Africa. Great. Uh, my, I, I perm reside permanently at Ho, is is water region. Great. So, what is your daily routine like? Is it you know could be quite different from mine? So I'm wondering, you know, what do you do when you get up in the morning? What does a kind of average day look like for you? That's an interesting question. Um, yeah, I also have a very busy day. I'm a net, so in the morning when I wake up, I just I start preparing for work based on the shift that I am. So, of course, you need to look at the family and support them with your small activities at the, in the house. And afterwards, you go to work to carry on your duties. Supposing you are for morning shift, then you go in the morning. But by 7.30, you have to be at work. If you are for afternoon by two o'clock, you have to be at work, and you are for night, seven o'clock p.m. So kind of a busy day, and you spend about uh, six to eight hours at work based on the shift. If uh, you are for night shift, you have to spend about fourteen hours. Wow! So <laughs> <laughs> my day is home. yeah, that sounds a lot busier than the days I have here. I'm not going to lie. Uh, would you say all your days are the same then? Do you have like quite a strict structure or, you know, are your weekends different? Do you anything, do you do anything different on the weekends? Do you relax? Well, it's all, as I said earlier, based on the shift. So you have now, because of the COVID-19, we are running a shifting system, which is uh, 12 hourly. And so when you're off, you can have some days in the house. You go for this on duty, then you have for this relaxation in the house. And of course, I have some things that I do in the house. I have a garden. So when I'm not at work, I go into the garden to see to the crops that I'm having. I also have some small farm animals, goats and uh, dogs Great. that I, I rear. So <laughs> feed them and support them. Those Great. that need medicine I have to provide me. <laughs> yeah. Great. And it sounds like you've got a very productive time. Uh, you've got a great kind of structure to your day. Um, so I was wondering, like, can you tell me about, you know, your studies? Like, what are you studying in particular? And what are kind of your job prospects for the future that you would want to further your studies with? Yeah. Currently, I'm preparing myself to write an IELTS. Of course, I'm concentrating on the English. But in my work, I really want to veer into research uh, so that in the future, perhaps I'll be a lecturer. And so now I've done my degree, so I'm preparing to do my master's um, in nursing uh, so wow. that later on I'll do my PhD that will allow me to you know, fit in the university to become a lecturer. So basically okay. right now what I'm doing as a study is to, I have... Um, um, uh, my former lecturer, I've been supporting her in a research activity. So I'm learning how to do both quantitative and qualitative research so that I become more proficient in it. And so when I get the, the opportunity to, to enter into uh, the master's level, I will also know how to go about it. Perfect. So if I was to give you some feedback, I think your answers are great. You've got a very fluent way of speaking and you've used a lot of good vocabulary, a lot of good grammar. Um, particular, if this, totally fine for what we're doing right now, because I want to get to know you, but if this was your exam, you probably would want to just use shorter answers, but obviously for this, it's fine. I want to find out lots more about you. Um, but if you're doing your exam, you know, and we were doing this very formally, you'd probably want to just, you know, give one or two sentence kind of answers, and then the examiner can just keep asking you questions. But, you know, obviously for the purposes of this, totally fine. And I think you've got quite a strong grasp of English. So you're quite a confident speaker. You can introduce lots of different topics. 
you have different vocabulary, you know everything I'm asking you and you're giving it back to me. So I think that's really good. Um, I'd quite like to move on to just another topic and find out a little bit more about your family life. So um, actually, I don't want to do that. I want to talk about your school life instead because I think we've kind of covered some of that stuff already. So what were some of your favorite subjects in school? And why did you enjoy them? Well, let me take it from the, the secondary level. That is the, yeah, the high school, I really love science. So interestingly, my goal was to be a doctor. But it's rather unfortunate I couldn't pursue me to do medicine because of the grade that I had. And also uh, the support from the house was not all that adequate. So I have yeah. to be in the store and have food and... I was able to pick to do my nursing. And the nursing particularly, we have a lot of subjects, but I really love the medical, surgical, and also anatomy. Uh, I, I still have the desire to, to become a doctor one day, uh, and poss if possible. <laughs> so, so I started to study hard, and if I get opportunity, I'll explore other areas. Um, so, 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 so that I, I can ach still achieve my goal. Mm -hmm. So have you, have you known since you were a small kid that you wanted to do medicine? Or did you find out quite recently? Because I know my brother's a doctor as well. And he literally had a stethoscope when he was like a small child. And he always knew he wanted to be a doctor. So have you always known that? Or was it something you just kind of realized as your studies were going on? I always loved to, and I, I knew it since infancy. Um, anyway, my, my, my father was, was um, a, a homeopathic doctor. I mean, that is about plants. So it kind of, uh, the interest or desire happened one day. Let me tell you a story about it. We, 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 we were, at, my, my younger sister was admitted in the hospital. Uh, that there was no doctor that it was a weekend. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, she, she passed on. And what it really pained me that uh, how, how could that happen? What implies mm -hmm. that the, the hospital was lacking human resource. And so I really made my goal that one day I will become a doctor so that I can also support the, 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 the system. Uh, mm -hmm. So that, you know, the human resource to become more and maybe I can also save life. And so based yeah. on that experience, we always want to be about just that <laughs> because of sure. life and situation as things move on, things cannot go on as planned. That is yeah. why I still in the medical field so that I can still learn and work with the doctors and see how opportunity can um, open way for me so that in the future I may Oh, that's great. Wow. Sounds like you're very independent. You know what you want to do, which is a really good thing. Uh, because I know I didn't really know what I wanted to do until I was like 17, 18. And, you know, it's always, it's always nice to meet people who kind of have always known in that way. So what I kind of want to talk a little bit about, about with you now is um, kind of more social issues because... This is something that will be on part three of the speaking exam. So after you've done the introductory part and the more descriptive part, you're going to be asked more opinion-based questions on social issues. So the first one I want to ask you, um, do you think video games can be problematic? And do you play video games yourself? And if so, do you think there's anything bad for society about them, basically? Uh, I think we might have lost a sigh, but I can answer the question myself. Um, I'm just going to remove a sigh for now and basically give my answer for that question. And so if you want to talk about video games being problematic, you can give a kind of for and against structure. You can say, you know, many people believe that video games can cause issues such as violence and social isolation. So you can give the negatives. And then you can also go on and talk about the pros. So you could say 
if video games are used in moderation, they can be very beneficial. And so you can give a kind of for and against structure to the argument, and that will show your examiner that you can give opinions on things, you can describe things in detail, because this will move you away from your more introductory sections where you are quite short and concise and getting to know someone. And now you can go on to your opinions about things. So we've got some other people coming in and I'm gonna add people shortly. Um, I'm just going to kind of talk more about the part three, because this is really the part where you're going to want to get most of your kind of complex grammar and more uh, of your kind of better vocabulary in, because this is the part where you're gonna talk about things in a lot of detail. And so if anyone else wants to join in, that's that would be great, um, because I feel like you'll improve your English best when you're actually talking to me. And particularly for the speaking section, you're obviously going to have to be speaking. So whereas I love you guys writing in the comments, um, for the speaking section, which is what I'll be covering a lot this week, it'd be good if some of you, like Osai, can have that back and forth dialogue with me. And yeah, then you should be prepared for your exam. Your examiner will be someone not too dissimilar than me. And he'll be asking you these questions, getting to know you. Um, and you want to keep it light, keep it not sounding pre-rehearsed too much. You want it quite naturalized. And basically you want to just give your opinion in a concise kind of way. So if I want to talk further about video games, I could say that, you know, they can lead to addiction. People can develop kind of video game disorders where they get very socially isolated and play too many video games. I mean, I know I love video games probably a little bit too much. So it's probably a good thing for me to talk about. Um, and, you know, there are pros and cons to these kind of things. These are the kind of questions you're going to be asked. There'll be pros and cons. Um, you will get one to two minutes to think about your answer. Um, and this period of time, you want to just be thinking about everything bad about video games, everything good. You know, you don't have to be an expert on video games at all. Just as long as you can think of a few things, um, you don't have to be too creative, you know, something quite self-explanatory, quite basic. But as long as you can explain it in detail and give some counter arguments, some for arguments, then I think that will stand you in really good stead. And so, you know, there's other issues with video games we could talk about, such as cyberbullying, um, online predators, these kind of bad stereotypes that are associated with on the online world. These are definitely things that could crop up on your exam and that you're going to have to deal with in real time and respond to your examiner. And so, yeah, I would, I'm interested in any of you, if any of you would like to join the chat with me and we can do the introduction section if you want, or we can do the kind of social issue section. I think the introductory section is definitely um, kind of the, the easiest component of the test. And it's, it's an easy way to get you comfortable with your examiner and to find out a little bit about each other and to you know talk about something you know so talk about your family life your work life and yeah so something i think would be good to talk about another topic this is probably going to be part two and part two is typically going to be a describe question so it's going to be asking you something like describe one of your favorite tv shows or movies and why was it impactful to you so for me personally, I would say one of the most impactful TV shows I've watched is Breaking Bad. And the reason for that is because I think the storytelling, the camera work is so incredible that it really kind of makes me passionate about maybe creating my own kind of content because the way it's shot is just so kind of, um, impactful and really kind of is just aids the storytelling and helps you 
to know what's going on in a really interesting way. So Fokradin asked, can I join the chat? Yes, you can. I'm just going to post the link again and um, hopefully you guys can join with me because uh, that's really what I wanted to do. I wanted to have, um, you know, speaking with you guys about it. So it's not just me talking to the screen and it's you guys talking back to me, me giving you some feedback. And so, you know, you will, there are topics that crop up time and time again. So there are things you can revise. If you revise TV shows, you revise some of your favorite movies, some of your hobbies in general, I think would be very useful. And yeah, you should try to use some, maybe some less common vocabulary as well. Some idioms can be really good if you can, but it doesn't need to be as polished as your written work at all. And so you want to just make it flow nicely and to keep talking with your examiner. And so I've just posted the link in the chat now. So I'm wondering if you guys can all see that and try join in with me. Um, so we can like or sided, we can have a chat and get to know each other and see how uh, how you guys English all 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 is. So I posted the link there, and if anyone wants to join, please feel free. So a common question you're going to be asked is things about your hobbies. So I'm going to now talk about some of my hobbies and talk about um, a place in my hometown that I particularly like to go. So for me, I've always liked to go. So Syed says, I am not an English speaking person, but I'm tr doing to try my best. So don't worry. We're all at different levels, of course. Um, you know, you might be sitting your test in a few months. You might be sitting it next week. We're all at different levels. And so if you have the confidence to just come in the chat and, you know, we can talk, we can improve your English, you know, don't feel shy. Uh, we're all at different levels. Um, so if you're trying to do your best, that's all you can ask for. You just got to keep working, keep practicing the techniques. And there's really no reason why you guys shouldn't score highly in this, because if you put the groundwork in, then I think you can all achieve really high bands and do your best. And it's just about, it's just about practicing regularly, learning the techniques of answering the exam, which I'm going to cover in my live content. And yeah, getting familiar with some of the topics that are on the exam. So for example, you know, I'm going to talk about my hometown. That's going to come up most times in your exam. You know, I'd be surprised if you didn't talk about your hometown at all. Um, it's just an introdu introductory topic and something that's easy to talk about. So if I was to describe a place in my hometown, which I like to go, I would say that I used to really love going to the cinema. It was always something that I could do with my friends to relax. And unfortunately, due to coronavirus, cinemas have typically been closed. So I haven't been able to go as much as I would like. But of course, with online streaming and services like Netflix, you can get a lot of stuff online nowadays. So cinemas aren't essential, but they're definitely something fun you can do with your friends, uh, especially my hometown, because that's where that's where I often used to go with my friends and we'd be able to meet up together. So Fokradin's joined the chat. Thank you very much. And I'm going to add you to the call and just ask you some questions. Um, I think I'm going to ask you about your hobbies because that's what I've just been talking about. So I'm going to ask you a little bit about what you like to do in your hometown, what you don't like. And yeah, I'll add you to the call. So hi, how are you doing? And I'd like to ask you, what what's one of your favorite places to go in your hometown? So for me, it's the cinema. What's one of your favorite places? Why do you like to go there? If you can hear me okay. Can you hear me okay? I'm not too sure if Fockwood can hear me, but if we're talking about hometowns, we're probably going to want to kind of just pick one area. I mean, it doesn't even have to be true. 
It could be a total lie. It could be something that's not even in your hometown. Um, the examiner doesn't really care about your hometown. Uh, <laughs> he really just wants you to structure an answer in a nice, clear way. So even if you can't think about anything, I would suggest just make something up. Say that you, I don't know, you go golfing every weekend. It could be a total fabrication. So we've lost what could Unfortunately, maybe the internet's not working so great. Um, but that's not a problem, you know. Um, if you can try joining next time, that'd be great. Um, don't worry about it. And obviously, it takes quite a lot of courage to come on camera in front of everyone and, you know, speak in a foreign language because obviously I speak English fluently. So it's a lot easier for me. Um, but, you know, it's something that I think if you keep practicing, keep joining the lives regularly, keep putting yourself forward, volunteering. Um, then I think you're just going to get better and better and you're going to get more confident with English, with spoken English. And so moving on from hometowns, unless anyone else wants to join, we can we can talk about hometowns definitely because it's something that will crop up time and time again. Other, other topics, there's like, you know, the internet, movies, TV, your hometown, um, you know, the government, all these different kind of things will continually crop up. And so, you know, you can talk about very current issues. I mean, if you notice in my answers, I'm talking about coronavirus. You know, you can talk about current issues, keep it light, keep it simple. So if Ockridge has joined back, we're going to try speak with him again. Hopefully it's working better. I know some of you are really far away, so the internet's not always the best. But um, I'm going to ask Fockton to join back in. Hopefully I'm saying your name correct. Uh, oh, unfortunately, he's just left again. So the internet, obviously, when you're talking to people who live so far away, it's going to be difficult. Um, but luckily, uh, we've got Hijab joining in. So I'm going to try bring her into the call and ask her about her hometown and why she likes it or if she doesn't like it so i'm gonna add it to the stream hi hijab how are you doing and first of all where, where are you from hi i'm good thank you i am from pakistan and wow. i recently moved to england just great last week. perfect so in Pakistan, where would you recommend someone to go if they're coming over to travel? Where would you particularly say you have to go there or you haven't been to Pakistan properly? Where are some of your favorite places in Pakistan that you love to go? I think Lahore would be the best place because there are many good uh, restaurants and the food there is really good. Great. So what I particularly liked about your answer there is Sure, it's concise, and that's exactly how you're supposed to answer the introduction. You want to keep it simple, get your um, examiner to know you, ask, answer a little bit about yourself. So if I was to go on with this, I would say, you know, is there anywhere in Pakistan that you don't like? Like, is there anywhere you try to avoid? Or is there anything you don't like just about your country in general? I would say Karachi is a city which is really overpopulated and the corruption and the crime rate there is really high. Yeah. So I think I would never want to live there if I'm living in Pakistan. So mm -hmm. I also won't recommend anyone to live there. <laughs> I mean, I can definitely relate to that because I live in Liverpool. It's a, it's a, it's a busy city, but it's not overly busy i mean if you go to london it's so overpopulated you can't have a moment's rest it's just a very fast pace of life constantly everyone's running about bumping into each other no one cares do you know what i mean everyone's quite just rushing about so that's probably probably similar to karachi in a way you know it's, it's just very busy and maybe that's not not something you like yourself so in terms of your hobbies, um, what do you? What would you say your main hobby is? Is uh, you know, are you interested in sports, video games, or you know, what are your kind of hobbies that you like to do in your free time? I would say my hobbies are watching Netflix, 
Okay, and I like to read and write also. So I was into content writing before. So I used to write a lot. Great. But now I have been taking a break from that. When did you start writing? Like, did you start writing when you were very little, or was it more of a recent thing? Or it's more like a like someone gives you a topic on some on a topic, and you research and write on that. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's more, more like content, uh, content creating thing. Great. You write like creative stories as well, or no? It's more like blogs mm -hmm. on uh, travel or beauty or health, something like that. Perfect. So I kind of want to move on to the kind of part three section of the speaking. So that's typically going to ask for longer answers and talk about kind of social issues and more complex topics. So one thing I wanted to ask you is we live in an age now where cancel culture is quite a big thing. So if you see on Netflix, things will get cancelled for maybe, you know, having something inappropriate in it. And what are your opinions on this? And do you think we should censor television that was made like 20 years ago, let's say, or do you think that's the wrong strategy? What Did do you, you think? say cancel culture? Yeah, so on Netflix, they've started removing things. So I know, I think Friends was removed because no. um, some of the language in it is quite problematic and it can be seen as sexist. You know, do you think it's right to cancel these things? Or do you think maybe that's the wrong approach? Uh, I personally won't um, appreciate cancel culture because uh, it's just another form of hate, hating or hating a specific thing or a person or a, or a culture. So it's just, I think it roots from hate and I don't support hate and i think people should be more mature and accept different things and different opinions and right. let others live and live peacefully peacefully themselves also sure. so that's a great answer i think um you show a really strong grasp of english if you don't mind me saying um and i think you kind of are able to explain your points give other examples uh, so, although maybe the question I'm asking you is, you know, you could say quite a short answer, you've given more examples, you've explained yourself further, and I think you've shown quite a good, strong grasp of vocabulary, and you've effectively answered the question. So, another one I kind of wanted to ask you is about cinema, because that I've seen that pop up on lots of different exams about how popular cinema is nowadays so do you think cinema has decreased or increased in popularity over the last few years and why do you think this is i think cinema are really a trend because people prefer going to the cinemas even in the pandemic days like even when the there's a lockdown uh, people were missing going to the cinema and watch movies together with their family or friends. And now when the lockdown is over, I've seen many people going. Not my, I haven't been going myself, but I would love to go and watch a nice movie with my friends. So I think they are still popular. Even since when I was trial until now, I think, especially the... I'll, Especially for me, I love Disney movies because I think they always have something to learn from and they're really nice and fun to watch. Great. Great. So, great response. I mean, I think you'd definitely be scoring a higher band for sure. I think you've got quite a strong, confident way of speaking, quite fluent and quite good at getting your point across, giving extra examples. And so probably the last thing I wanted to ask you about is probably something not covered yet, or I would say in the introduction, we've done a social topic. But part two of the exam is 
pretty much about kind of describing something. So I'd like to ask you a bit about your education. And I was wondering if you could describe to me how did you find your school life? Did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? And what are some reasons for this? Uh, my education is I have done my A-levels from Pakistan, from my hometown, which is called Gujarat. And I had my A-levels in biology, chemistry, and physics. And my school was really nice because the teachers were very, very like dedicated to what they were teaching and they always were like, uh, you can come uh, on break time and have extra time with me if you don't have, uh, like if you don't understand anything or you need extra help or something. So I think most of my teachers were really nice and wanted us to like love studying and that's why I think the teachers made that period the best period of my life. I don't think when I'm going to university I get that uh, like response from my teachers because um, because they were something else. I think they were really nice people, human beings before teachers. So I, I also sometimes I'm, I'm still in contact with most of them. So I think that the school time is the best time and you really enjoy it. And uh, most of my friends also are those whom I had studied in school with. So I don't think I want any more friends other than them. <laughs> so they are the closest. Yeah, yeah. It's always good to have friends from like years and years ago. And then, you know, you've always got that special bond with them. Um, I can completely relate to that about school. A lot of my teachers were particularly impactful to me, you know, and kind of help you become the person you are today. And so I think you've shown a really strong grasp of English there. I think you definitely would be scoring a higher band. I think only real thing I would potentially criticize you on is maybe try to use different words except really and very. Yeah. Um, but you know, your English flows perfectly well. I just think if you want to really achieve the highest brand you can, maybe try to just use different words, maybe like extremely, um, words such as that, and kind of, you know, show your examiner that you have lots of layers to your vocabulary, so that way he can, you know, he or she can just get an overall sense of everything you know, because, you know, you seem very switched on, so I'm sure you know all these different words. So just try to use them as much as you can in your exam. I mean, obviously, the speaking component is more informal than the writing. So if you use, if you're, if you're writing, then you would want to really make sure you're using a lot of synonyms and a lot of, you know, different words for things. So you wouldn't want to be using really all the time, very all the time. Um, the spoken language is a bit, it's a bit more okay, but you know, you have to, you know, you don't get long for answering these questions. They're quite short. You know, you get only little snippets of uh, time to answer them in. It could be one minute, two minutes. And in that time, just try to show the examiner that you really, you know, know everything about it. And know lots of different words and different ways of introducing topics. But I think you did very well. And that's probably all the questions I have for you, if that's okay. Uh, and honestly, I think if more people would like to join in into the chat and we could have maybe three or four people at a time talking, that would be great. Um, but other than that, I think you really answered those questions very well. And, you know, how long have you been preparing for IELTS yourself? Have you been, when are you sitting your exam and how long have you been preparing for it so far? Because I would say, you know, you've covered a good range of stuff already. Actually, I have given my IELTS once, but I'm planning to have a retake soon. So I want to achieve a higher band than sure. before. I had a 6.5 before, yeah. but I would expect 
have uh, eight next time maybe mm-hmm. so i'm preparing for it and i hope i'll get get that yeah well i think we particularly have just a very good understanding of grammar there's not really any grammatical errors in your sentences but i would say to just hit the higher band yeah just use more synonyms so use instead of very use extremely um words such as this and introduce things in different ways but that's something 100 percent you can learn you know i don't think there'd be much problem with you scoring band eight band nine if you just you know hone those couple of little things and then i think you should be able to uh, achieve higher than a 6.5 because you've got a really you know confident way of speaking fluent way of speaking and yeah so i think um if nobody else wants to go in i probably would end the live chat soon but if people don't want to join um that's okay because i will be doing these lives regularly i'll be doing probably i'll be doing up on tomorrow i might be doing one later today as well on something slightly different so i know there's been some connection problems but you know don't worry about that that's probably to be expected um i think we've covered a good range of topics we've had two speakers in who have who are probably on the higher band side of things so i know everyone's gonna be at different levels and that's totally okay um and yeah just feel confident to put yourself forward and we can keep speaking about the topics that are going to be on the exam and so as we're approaching on the hour mark i was wondering hijab if you have any specific questions you can ask me and if anyone else does as well um or hijab what i'm interested in is is there anything specific you'd like me to cover on the page in the future like do you need help specifically with speaking or writing listening reading I think with myself, uh, I got really n- nervous with the speaking part because I'm not uh, an introvert. Uh, I'm not an extrovert. I mean, uh, no. and uh, I got really nervous. Uh, the mm, the person was really nice, but like he tried to make make me comfortable, but I still was nervous, and I. That's completely understandable. I mean, it's 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 one thing having a normal conversation with someone in English, but if you know they're kind of scribbling down everything you're saying, it can be a different thing. But I think in that situation, it's just about mentally preparing yourself. Um, and it's something that I think you'll get better at with time. You know, if you keep join, like I think you've done, if you really get nervous and you've just joined a live chat in front of all these people and done really well, then that's something you should be really proud of. So I think if you just keep putting yourself in those kind of situations that might make you feel a little bit uncomfortable, and then I think you'll just get better with your nerves. And if you just keep practicing it, I think you know eventually when you go in to the examiner's office, you'll be less nervous. You'll be able to focus on your English because I definitely know nerves can affect your English, and you might be like uh, uh, uh a little bit like that. So that happens, but practice is the main thing, fixing that, I would say, um, and just improving your confidence, keep on practicing. And I might do a specific video on how to improve your nerves and how to just prepare yourself mentally for the exam, um, because I know the speaking component is definitely never met the examiner before like you say you're like the introvert there's all different personality types so that's one of those things i think i could definitely cover in a video and go over more specifically exam techniques and how to psych yourself up um if you know that phrase and you know if anyone's got any other questions please comment them in the comment section i'll reply straight away um, i know there's been some network problems you don't have to worry about that um yeah it's, it's gonna happen unfortunately because we're all from such different places but i think unless anyone's got any specific questions then i'd love to see you all tomorrow for another live stream um and we can just keep chatting with each other i'd let next time i'd love to get more than one person in so maybe two or three people at a time and we can all just kind of talk to each other as if we were just sat around a table and yeah thank you so much hijab for your answers um best of luck for your studies i hope i see you on the next uh live chat 
And unless anyone's got any specific questions, I think that's about it for now. Um, so there will be another live stream tomorrow. And if you've got any questions, message the page, put it on the live stream chat, and we'll respond straight away. So thank you guys for watching. And just on the hour mark, I'm going to cut this short. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.